Come here. Come come close. I have a secret to tell you. Don't don't tell anyone, okay? I might be mildly 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 impaired. Uh but I have to do a trade reaction cuz Jeremy Grant just got traded to the Portland Trail Blazers. So we're going to see how this goes. I think I'm going to be able to seem normal, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time in case I don't. So, Adrian Wojnarowski 12 minutes ago reported that Detroit has traded Jeremy Grant to Portland for a 2025 first round pick via the Milwaukee Bucks. So it's not Portland's own pick, it is indeed the Bucks pick. And then there are some swaps involved in this that is second rounders. I believe Detroit moves up 10 spots in the second round from 46 to 36. Uh, and Portland gets that 46th pick, and that's the noteworthy stuff. There's also some other stuff moving around, but really nothing of a note outside of the Blazers got Jeremy Grant for one first round pick that belongs to a contender. As long as nothing goes wrong, the Milwaukee Bucks should be very good in 2025 still. So a, and not to mention, uh, and then there's also two second round picks, one this year, moving them up 10 spots, and then a 2025 second round pick from Portland. So two seconds, a first rounder, and a first rounder three years from now, and that got them Jeremy Grant. Now, the reason that I highlight that it's so little is first of all, of course, it's noteworthy for Portland to get such a good player for such a low asking price, even though I do believe there is a large chunk of individuals who overrate Jeremy Grant, and that's coming from me as someone who started off his YouTube career as the biggest Jeremy Grant fan. I've actually stopped being his fan as he's become more well-known because the avenue in which he's become more well-known has been by becoming less the player that I liked and more the player that a general public, general fan base can enjoy. And that is this isolation score archetype, just a guy who gets 18 to 20 points per game. As soon as Jeremy became that guy, way more people liked him and I liked him a lot less. And the reason for that is that is still, even though he's a little bit better of a score than I think a lot of people would have given him credit for, especially coming into the league because he was a complete zero offensively, he is still very much not a go-to scoring option, really. He's somebody that you want to get buckets within the flow of your offense and can do that at about like 14 points per game on a level of efficiency that is appropriate and taking shots that are appropriate and does not interrupt the flow of your offense, even though he started to do that a little bit towards the tail end of his time in, uh, in, in Denver, but he was also doing so much good on top of that that everyone was willing to let that slide. Um, turns out he wanted to do more of that not good shit in Detroit and not win games subsequently as a result. But all, all this to say, basically I think a lot of people think that Jeremy Grant is better than he is because Jeremy Grant thinks that he's better than he is and he takes a bunch of shots that he should not be taking. And a team trading for him will hopefully be asking him to not really be that type of guy. I am praying that Portland is not expecting Jeremy to be some high stakes third option. Uh, I'm hoping that their plan is Dame and Simons going forward as your one and two, and they have something bigger up their sleeve than just trading for Jeremy Grant. Now, luckily, in terms of their asset tool chest, they have plenty to go with because of this trade, because they gave away so little to get Jeremy Grant. Just one first round pick that was not going to be usable until three years from now from a contender. That is a very good deal for Portland. And on Detroit's end of things, it didn't feel like this was the best option you had. I mean, we were talking about potentially Patrick Williams just at this last traded line. So the fact that you went from a guy who was the number four pick two years ago to now this shows quite a bit in terms of the level of asset mismanagement that happened there. If Detroit had traded Jeremy Grant after his first season going into this one, he th th they would have definitely got a lot more. They held on to him for too long and for no real benefit because one reason why you want to get rid of Jeremy Grant is he kind of hindered the development and the growth of some of their younger players like Sadiq Bey, like Killian Hayes, although to be fair, Killian Hayes might just suck. Cade Cunningham, um, Cade Cunningham being the biggest one, obviously. 
because uh, Jeremy wasn't really have, didn't have a play style or a veteran presence that really benefited those guys, at least not to an extent that overwrote the bad things that came with them. So Jeremy being this 26, 27 year old guy who's not really a part of your long term future, but also not so old that you just throw him out. Uh, that whole situation was just not great because Jeremy, he's getting buckets and he enjoys doing that, sure, but ultimately he's just taking shots and opportunity and learning opportunities away from Detroit's young players. So it was almost a guarantee that Jeremy Grant would not be on the Detroit Pistons going into this year, but I'm just saying that the team waited too damn long to arrive to that conclusion. I can respect not trading him at the in the last offseason because you were like, maybe him and Cade Cunningham would work. It didn't, and you knew that by the trade in line, and yet you still did this. You still waited, you still didn't take what I am almost certain there was an offer on the table at the deadline that was better than this one. That said, the Detroit Pistons in general have done a really good job at managing their team and they deserve more credit for it. And I am also potentially just saying this so I don't get an angry text from Nicholas Henkel. Anyways, um, moving back to Portland. As mentioned, you don't want them to be making this trade presuming that it's the home run of the offseason. And this is the problem that I and everybody else has had with Portland for years. They make one move that feels kind of big, but it's clearly not enough. And they just treat that like, all right, mission accomplished, we're done here. Like Yusuf Nurkic is the one that really stands out as the main one where it really felt like they were like, yeah, Nurkic is enough for us to bank on, we're, we're gonna live off the fuel of, well, we made the Nurkic move for like two and a half, three fucking seasons. Uh, and then of course this deadline, they got rid of everything except for Dame and Simons. So. Um, we now find them in an interesting position. Uh, you now have Jeremy Grant added to this equation. There's really a lot of room to grow this roster in many directions. I don't remember what their lottery pick is, but they can either take a player or trade that player. My guess would be they would trade that pick and or player, depending on the timing of the situation. They might just draft somebody and then trade them later on. But either way, they do still have a lot of assets and a lot of opportunity to build this team towards something that can go higher than what they have before. I made a whole video on Portland situation, and unfortunately it's a video that didn't do that well for how much I actually liked the video, because they have the asset tool chest to go in a direction of a great rebuild or of really trying to hastily throw together a championship contending team. And I go back and forth as to which one they should do. I think it is very self-evident that they are going in the uh, second direction there. And this move is very clearly an indicator of that. Um, so it's just a matter of time and what we're going to see from them. Now it's interesting, I don't want to go too in depth on this because this is going to be a topic for a main channel video and potentially the future. Uh, with the whole Kyrie Irving situation in Brooklyn, there is a chance that Kevin Durant himself might actually be available this offseason. And if we are looking at some of the teams that have the most amount of assets capable of throwing at the Brooklyn Nets, well, the Portland Trailblazers are one of those teams. Throw them Anthony Simons on a sign and trade, give them as many first round picks as they ask for, and you can potentially get yourself Kevin Durant. And now you have a Jeremy on that team, you have whatever role players he managed to sign, you have obviously Dame paired with Kevin Durant, and at that point, you just have to wait and see what happens. Have, hopefully put some fucking defense around that team, because otherwise it's just going to be the Nets again, but Dame's a little bit better than Kyrie Irving and actually shows up to his games. Which, that actually does make a large difference. But still, either way, uh, there would still be a lot of work to do, even if that hypothetical, hypothetical did come to fruition. But it is something to keep an eye on with Portland, and I think Portland is going to be one of the most interesting teams and one of the most active teams this uh, offseason. And I honestly pray that they will be one of the most active teams because God fucking knows they need to stop being so complacent. And the crazy trade deadline they had last offseason kind of indicated that they, they, they aren't going to be, finally. Man, I fucking nailed that, right?
It feels like I nailed that. Maybe I was slurring my words and stumbling the whole way through, but I think I got it. So yeah, that's it. Goodbye.